It is a rainy spring day and I am here to talk about giving bees water. Whether you are a beekeeper or not, you can really help the bees in your area by providing them with a water source. It has been raining off and on all morning. And as I sit here, there are bees coming to our water source. Despite the fact that there's probably tons of water sitting on the outer cover of their hive. Why do bees gather water and how can we make a water source for our bees so that they can actually find it and that they use it? That's what I'm here to talk about in this video. My name is Larissa. This cat channel is called Beekeeping Made Simple. And I made the mistake for like the first eight years as a beekeeper of not really providing my bees with water. I thought that there was water and nectar and that they really needed water to cool down the hive when it was hot out. And that is true, but they actually need water throughout the year. The cold winter months being some of the times that they need water the most and are the thirstiest. What you want to do when making a water source is you want just a container that holds water. Honestly, it is as simple as that. So here we went to the dollar store and got some bowls. You know, this bowl holds like a quart, maybe a quarter and a half of water. We also took a sled that doesn't really work so well anymore. So we just filled it up with water and that is really all there is to it. So you can use an old sled, planters that don't have a hole in them, bird baths, water troughs, ponds, large bowls, any container. It could be large, it could be small, it could be deep, it could be shallow. Ideally, you want it to just be colors that will attract bees. So bees are attracted to blue, purple, yellow. They can't see red though. So that's why you'll see a lot of hummingbird feeders are red. And that's because hummingbirds are attracted to red and bees do not see the color. So it's a win-win for, for you. To start, I recommend going cheap. Thrift stores, dollar stores, your garage, find stuff that's cheap and easy to make and make a lot of water sources. Put them close to the bees, away from the bees, in the sun and in the shade and just see what you can find. Once you attract them and they've got a spot that they like, then you can consider maybe making it a little bit nicer. Uh, maybe that's where you want to put the pond or the bird bath or have that really fancy planter. The farm I worked for, they had large troughs. They were like, you know, three feet deep. They were for filling up with water and providing water for cows and donkeys and livestock. Um, the hotel I kept bees for, they had bird baths with a little trickling fountain in the center that the bees also loved as well. But the second really important part about your water source is providing the bees somewhere to land so that they do not drown. Not just because you don't want to see dead bees in your water source, but the bees will not land. You will see them just like skimming the water and that is them trying to find a place for them to land without drowning. If they keep getting their legs wet and not safely landing on something, they will give up and they will go find another water source somewhere else. So great things for uh, bees to land on large rocks. This really large rock right here is very bumpy. Bees love to land on it. Sticks. Bees love this one stick in the bowl, they will land on the stick and slurp up the water from it. And that seems to actually be a really strong preference of theirs. If they can land on something and suck the water out of it. Moss, they love. I found, we found this moss yesterday actually. I was just walking off the back deck and saw it starting to grow in between some of the stepping stones. My daughter found these big seeds. They've been going crazy. Um, slurping water up out of that and even actually these little rocks my daughter's obsessed with these tiny little rocks that are used uh, between the stepping stones as decorative rocks over here she's always playing with them so she put a bunch in there and the bees so if you put a whole bunch of those little rocks in then it makes a little beach for them but of course the deeper and the larger the water source the less often you have to fill it up and it will stay nice and cool a lot longer but you're then going to have to provide more 
solid floating objects. Okay, so now we have the water source and we have something that they're going to land on. The more, the better. If you can fill up this water source with as much as possible, so in case a bee does fall down into the water, she doesn't have to swim too far before she lands on something and can pull herself out, the better. But then you wanna put water in. So this sled is just water from the hose and uh, we do not have well water it's just the county water um, and that's what's coming out of the hose so that's what's in this one but in one of the bowls i put sea salt so it's one teaspoon of sea salt non-iodized to one quart of water and then the other bowl we have a quarter teaspoon of bleach added to one quart of water now this is by no means a very good science experiment seeing what bees prefer but very rarely are the bees going to the bowl with the, the bleach so we stopped giving them that zero bees at the fresh water salt water one two three four five six seven eight nine these are all in full sun I have some in a variety of spots that are full shade. I have some close to the hive, but they are here at this water source strictly. And this one is about a hundred feet from the hive. But if the bees have gone to a water source that you don't want them going at, you know, of course, prevention is key. Have the water out before you even get your bees in March, when it's still cold out, when it's still in the 50s, because when, the first time they go looking for water, you want your water source to be what they find, not the pool. But once they're already at the pool, you want to have your water sources out, just like I mentioned, in a variety of spots with lots of places for the land, for them to land. Have some with a little bit of bleach, some with a little bit of salt, some that are just fresh water and make sure they are constantly being replenished so they are not drying out and they are left to look for water somewhere else. You can also, if you, if you have access to the pool, grab some of that pool water and put it in one of the water sources so that they are attracted to it. You don't have to continue to do it, just you know, for a little bit until they find it. And if this is not your pool, then talk to your neighbors, apologize, offer to give them some honey when you have it, and let them know that you're doing everything you can to make a water source for them, and then it could be a couple of weeks. In the meantime, if they are buzzing all over the pool or drowning a lot in the pool, put a washcloth or a hand towel along the edge of some area of the pool so that you're making a little beach for them so that they are not drowning in the pool. They have a little spot to get in and out. They are not drowning and the people at the pool don't have to deal with bees every which way that they turn. If you are thinking about becoming a beekeeper or are already in your first or second year, check out my online beekeeping class at beekeepingmadesimple.com. I take you through start to finish how to care for your bees your first few years. And it comes with mentorship so you can contact me when you need to and ask me questions specific to you and your bees and we can figure it out together. Now, why do bees need water? I mean, they're already gathering nectar and nectar is primarily water. Well, there have been numerous studies that have shown that a hive cannot properly cool down in the heat of summer without gathering water. Bees will go gather water, bring it back to the hive and they will spray it over the brood. There will be other bees that are fanning their wings, flapping their wings, <laughs> circulating the air, cooling it down, creating this air conditioning system, essentially. And there will also be a ton of bees that have just left the hive, hanging out outside, and other bees that are at the entrance. If you open up the beehive in those warm summer months and put your hand just over those top bars under the lid, you will be amazed at the cool air you will feel. But in the wintertime, bees need water too. Bees will use that water to help digest the fondant or that crystallized honey that is inside the hive. Adult bees also need water to prevent dehydration and nurse bees need to consume water in order to produce that royal jelly to feed the larva. But times of year when you especially want to make sure that they have it is during times of dearth when there is not a lot of flowers producing nectar blooming, when it is incredibly hot out, and when it is winter time and there is very little water for them to gather. And so within the hive you have bees that are water collectors, 
They are foragers along with the bees that are gathering nectar and pollen and propolis. There are bees whose job it is to gather water. And when water is not needed, they actually sit within the hive and do not leave until they need more water to be gathered. There are also water receivers. These bees are roughly middle aged, 10 to 20 days old, and they sit in the hive holding water in their bodies. You could also call them water bottle bees if you like. These bees will take water from the water collectors and hold it in their body. They essentially are acting like a living water bottle. So whether you are actively a beekeeper or not, I hope you put some water out for the bees, the pollinators in your area and get some kids involved or some family members. It's always nice to share information and the love of insects with the people around you because, you know, they get a bad rap. People are always so scared of them, so quick to swat, so quick to squish them. But the more they observe them and learn about them, the more respect they have for them and the nicer they are to them. Thanks for watching. See you next time.